Hey everybody, thanks for joining me for this episode of ATP, Ask the Pastor. Today's question goes like this. Dear Pastor, I know that in Lutheranism we believe that a believer can lose his salvation. Can you explain how this can happen? And as a consequence, do we hold that there are people who are justified as Christians and yet are not part of the elect? So, Christians can lose their salvation, and they do so by unbelief, uh, which often results uh, from severe sins against one's conscience. And by that we mean doing something that you know to be against God's commandment, willfully, intentionally sinning. Now the scriptures warn against this quite often. St. Peter says in uh, 2 Peter 2.21 that people can turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. So it's possible to rebel, and in that rebellion to grieve God the Holy Spirit, by sinning against conscience. Paul says in Ephesians 4, verse 30, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And in 1 Corinthians 9, 27, Paul himself admits that even he could be disqualified from the heavenly prize if he doesn't discipline his body and keep his sinful flesh from ruling and reigning over him. Martin Luther writes about this in the Small Called Articles in the Book of Concord when he speaks about uh, David and how David fell into manifest open sins of adultery, murder, and blasphemy. That when David fell into these sins, then uh, the Holy Spirit was absent from him. He writes, For the Holy Ghost does not permit sin to have dominion, to gain the upper hand as to be completed, but represses and restrains it, so that it must not do what it wishes. But if it do what it wishes, the Holy Ghost and faith are not present. Jesus himself speaks about this uh, in the parable in Luke chapter 11, verses 24 through 26. Jesus says, When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest, and finding none, he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. So when the unclean spirit goes out from a man, that's when the Holy Spirit enters in through the word, through conversion, creates faith. However, if one then sweeps out the house of the heart, so to speak, um, and then that wants to continue in sin, then uh, all they're doing is garnishing their heart for the evil spirit to return with seven more spirits that are, that are even evil or, or more evil and more entangling than original, originally. This is why St. Peter writes in 2 Peter 2.20, For if after they have escaped the pollutions of this world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. So as we've said on other occasions, uh, believers can fall away from faith through willful sinning, and by which then they let the sinful flesh reign in them. And by letting the sinful flesh reign, they cast out faith. And they drive away God the Holy Spirit from their hearts, who's the creator and sustainer of faith. Now, it needs to be said that, that when this happens, uh, God does still then, throughout that person's life, call them to repentance and faith through the word. The formula of Concord has some very comforting words for anyone who's ever sinned against conscience. Uh, this is in the Solid Declaration, Article 11, Paragraph 75. Since our election to eternal life is founded, not upon our godliness or virtue, but alone upon the merit of Christ and the gracious will of his Father, who, because he is unchangeable in will and essence, cannot deny himself. On this account, when his children depart from obedience and stumble, he calls them again through the word to repentance, and the Holy Ghost wills thereby to be efficacious in them for conversion. And when, in true repentance, by a right faith, they turn again to him, he will always manifest his old paternal heart to all who tremble at his word and from their heart turn again to him as it is written. Now, does this mean then, as a consequence, that people who are converted, justified, um, can yet not be a part of the elect? Well, what does the word tell us? If we look in Luke chapter 8, we see Jesus telling the parable of the sower. And he says that when the sower sowed his seed in verse 8, uh, excuse me, 8 verse 6, uh, some fell on the rock, and as soon as it sprang up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. 
He then goes on to explain in verse 13 that the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, who believe for a while, and in time of temptation, fall away. These are the people who receive the gospel with great joy uh, initially. They're happy to be Christians. They're happy to receive the gospel. They believe for a while, Jesus says, but then due to the temptations of this life, they end up falling away from the faith. So if someone falls away from the faith, then, and isn't later converted back to the faith, then we assume that that person was not among the elect. Why not? Well, the elect are those whom God has predestined to eternal life from eternity. And that means that in time, that is in people's lives, they'll hear the word of God. They'll believe and be justified. They'll be sanctified. They'll faithfully use the word and the sacraments. Uh, and in that faithful use of the word and sacraments, they will endure unto the end and be saved. You know, consider what Jesus says in Matthew 24, 13. He who endures until the end shall be saved. So when a Christian falls away from faith, due to unbelief, uh, because they allow sins to reign in their mortal body when they chase out the Holy Spirit, that doesn't mean that we automatically assume that they weren't part of God's elect. Because as long as they are still alive, God is still going to be working upon them, or, or could be working upon them, to bring them to repentance and faith. The Formula of Concord says it this way. Uh, this is, again, in the Solid Declaration, um, Article 11, Paragraphs 54 and 55. Thus there is no doubt that God most exactly and certainly saw before the time of the world and still knows who of those who are called will believe and will not believe. Also, who of the converted will persevere in faith and who will not? Who, after a fall into grievous sin, will return and who will fall into obduracy? So to the number and how many there are of these on both sides is beyond all doubt perfectly known to God, yet since God has reserved this mystery for his wisdom and in his word revealed nothing to us concerning it, much less commanded us uh, that we should not indulge our thoughts, reach conclusions, nor inquire curiously therein, but we should adhere to his revealed word to which he points us. So God knows from eternity who's going to believe the word and who's not going to believe the word. He also then knows who of those who hear will be converted uh, and then he knows of those who believe who will persevere into the end, and he knows who will fall away from the faith, who will not persevere into the end. Um, people that are not then part of the elect. This passage from the formula then also reminds us um, that we're not to investigate, we're not to indulge our thoughts and, curi and curiously inquire about all this, uh, but we're to simply stick to the revealed word of God. So if a Christian comes to me and tells me that he's sinning against conscience and he has no intention of stopping that sin, uh, then as pastor, I tell him that he's driving out faith in the Holy Spirit and that he can't be saved at this point. Uh, he needs to repent. He needs to be sorry for his sin. He needs to stop willfully doing it. Now, during the conversation and even in, in our thoughts about this situation, we should never be asking ourselves, well, is this guy among the elect or not? Because that's far beyond what God has given us in his word. It's God's will in his word that this man should repent of his sins believe in the gospel and have life. And again, the formula of Concord helps us distinguish between uh, God's will and God's will if people then reject repentance in Christ and instead embrace their sins and false security. In uh, Solid Declaration, Article 11, Paragraph 83, For it is God's revealed will, both, first, that God will receive into grace all who repent and believe in Christ. Secondly, that those who willfully turn away from the holy commandment and are again engaged, or excuse me, entangled in the pollutions of this world and garnish their hearts for Satan and do so despite uh, the Holy Spirit of God, he will punish. And when they persist therein, they shall be hardened, blinded, and eternally condemned. So uh, faithful Christians, uh, even in great weakness, can take heart in their eternal election because they cling to God's word and sacraments in faith, believing the gospel, receiving the promises of God. But those who sin against their conscience and embrace false security, uh, when they no longer believe the gospel, they aren't to be pointed to predestination at all, but they're to be pointed to the revealed will of God, which commands all men to repent of their sins and to look for Christ for their salvation. If they fall away, then they are not part of the elect. Hope that helps. We'll see you next time on ATP.